This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, he is a 35-year-old male patient who is diabetic for the last 8 years and has this intermittent cataract. The other eye is surophagic and is currently enjoying good vision in that eye. So let's begin the case. As the preliminary steps are being performed, let me remind you all about a video which I had posted some time back and it was titled The Only Parameter I Change for Most Cases. And if uh, you haven't had a look at it, please do check the video once again. FACO power settings is the one parameter which I change frequently depending upon the hardness of the nucleus. In this case, we're going to see how much important it is to titrate the energy delivery appropriately in every case. Back to this case, the predominant challenge was to get the rexis right here. After staining the anti capsule, the dispersive OED is used to fill the chamber and my plan is to make a two-staged rexis. Since the anti capsule is quite tense, I am aiming for a very small rexis. The egress of fluid out of the bag ensures some passive decompression. Although the visibility is not great, small primary rexus is completed. Decompression is now being performed using bimanual INA. Time to deal with the nucleus. Now I am aware that this young man, the nucleus is going to be very soft. So I am using very low amount of energy settings. It is set at a maximum of 10 and it is set at longitudinal mode to bury my tip in. But suddenly as I am trying to do this, this hole is created and it was quite you know alarming for me. The first thought which came to me was that has the posture capsule also been perforated? Well it was difficult to assess at this stage because the overlying nucleus was obstructing the view. I quickly went back and rechecked the power settings. It was set at a maximum of 10% only. Now let us try to analyze in the replay in slow motion. Now, as the foot pedal is being pushed, the energy has not even reached a level of 7 and suddenly we can see this jerk and a full thickness looking hole is created in the nucleus. The message was very loud and clear. The low energy which I thought was right for this density of the cataract was still considerably high for this nucleus. At this point, my only concern and suspicion is about the possibility of a similar hole in the posture capsule. I put in OVD under the rexis trying to levitate one edge of the nucleus out of the bag. The prolapsed edge of the soft nucleus is consumed. Similarly, the rest of the nucleus is carefully negotiated and eventually consumed. As the last bit of the nucleus is being aspirated, I am wary about the state of the posture capsule. Well, thankfully there was none. The posture capsule was intact. So the remaining cortex is aspirated quickly enough. And the intraocular lens is placed into the bag. So to summarize, I did have a momentary scare when I felt this sudden jerk and the formation of this hole in the nucleus. Well, this case teaches us of the fact that one needs to be very much aware of the density of the nucleus which we are dealing with. In such cases, it would be better off starting with zero energy and then increasing it only as and when required. And in certain tricky situations like the case in this one with extreme soft nucleus, Sometimes it would be safer just to displace the soft nucleus out of the bag using OVD and then aspirating it in the antechamber. That was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.